Hey, it's Ross from RossLukeman.com. Today I wanna to talk to you about three common mistakes I've seen with alternator charging when you are charging a rear battery bank in a van or RV. These are commonly made mistakes that could shorten the life of your alternator, shorten the life of your batteries, uh, potentially cause a fire, or just drain your engine battery and leave you stranded. So uh, these are very important things that I've seen. They're mistakes that honestly I've done or I've seen in other people's vans and I've kind of seen the uh, fallout or the carnage that happens when these mistakes are made. So uh, this should save you some trouble and hopefully prevent you from making these mistakes yourself. Now, the first major mistake is using a relay instead of a charger in the line between your alternator or your front system and your rear battery bank. So the relays are tried and true. They've been around for years and uh, they definitely work. They're voltage sensing, so they will sense when the engine is on and uh, the front system jumps in, vo in uh, voltage. They'll sense that and connect and send that power through. There's just a couple of problems with that in that the voltage is not regulated and uh, the current is not regulated either. So essentially, if you have the front system turn on and boost up to 14 volts, and let's say you've been out all weekend out in the desert and your rear system is at 11 volts, 11.5 volts, those rear batteries, you're going from a 14 volt system to an 11 volt system. And uh, it's like two water tanks that are off from each other. They're gonna try to equal out. And so you're gonna have a lot of water or a lot of current, a lot of electrical current flow through those lines and uh, it can overload things. It can overload the uh, fuses that you've put in in that line, say 100 amp fuses, uh, it can overheat the alternator, even just for five minutes, say eventually that rear battery comes up and the, uh, they equal out and the current slows down. Um, it may, the condition may go away, but there may be a period there where you are overheating the alternator. And also we have to look at the connection to the alternator is not typically made out under the hood. Typically we're gonna carry that power into the engine battery in and around the driver's seat and pick up that power and send it back. So we have to kind of worry about those cables between the alternator and the engine battery. They, not, they may not be sized to carry just an un, unlimited current. So uh, by not regulating the current and having the relay uh, just carry whatever current is needed to the back, uh, you can blow your fuses, overheat your alternator, overheat or catch on fire your uh, cables between the alternator and the engine battery. It just overloads things and puts additional stress on your system. And then uh, secondly, not only does it not regulate the current, it doesn't regulate the voltage. So typically the alternators are going to put out just a flat, you know, 14.0 volts. And um, that's going to top up your engine battery, which is typically lead acid, but your batteries in the back, um, sometimes they need more than 14 volts, sometimes they need less. So when they're uh, run down and bulk charging, they may need 14.4 volts. So the relay is just gonna send 14. So they'll never quite get full. And then when they do get close to full, say you've been hitting them with 14 volts for you know, four hours of driving, um, you would typically finish them off and then drop that voltage and float them. But again, you're gonna be getting that 14.0 volts um, you know, for four hours, eight hours, 12 hours. It's never going to subside. And um, you know, this is not ideal. Not only are you not going to get a full charge, but you may be sending a higher voltage than your battery wants uh, once it's you know, mostly charged up. Um, so it's just kind of sloppy battery charging in the back and the unregulated current could threaten not only those rear batteries, but also the rest of the system. I didn't really mention that the batteries themselves in the back, they, especially if they're lead acid, they want about 10% of their capacity in their current coming in. So if they are 100 amp hours, they want about 10 amps. And that is the typically the manufacturer's recommended charge rate. So let's say you've got 300 amp hours, you would send 30 amps. So what I've seen in a lot of these systems where you're charging lead acid batteries in the back, if they're run down, you're getting over 100 amps off the alternator. So it's bad for the alternator. And then you can't send 100 amps into the lead batteries without heating them up. Their electrolyte can off gas and escape through the vents in the top of the battery. So you don't wanna lose that electrolyte and boil it off essentially. So you're shortening the life of the battery 
overheating the alternator, shortening its life. So there's just all sorts of things that are not necessarily immediately apparent to the naked eye when you install a system like this, but uh, over time it's going to shorten the life of your batteries and shorten the life of your alternator. So you think, you know, wow, I, I spent 80 bucks on the relay and uh, instead of getting a charger that uh, costs a couple hundred dollars, but you're really doing some damage. So the, the chargers, if you move to a Victron or Ryan charger like this, or a uh, BB1260 from Sterling, that's a, a 60 amp charger that's twice as big as the uh, Victron. Of course, you could use two of these right next to each other uh, to get 60 amps, but uh, they are going to regulate. I kind of just gave the answer there. They're gonna regulate it down to 60 amps if you use uh, two of these or 30 amps if you use one of these. Um, Renogy also has some good units where you can get 40, 50 amps, which is fine for any of these, you know, Sprinter, ProMaster, Transit. You can get 50, 60 amps off the alternator without damaging it. That's gonna translate to about 800 watts, but you're gonna cap it there at 800 watts, not 1200, not 1500. Um, and that's what's gonna flow. If you don't regulate that line and you run down those rear batteries, you're just gonna get a massive current through there and it's gonna heat things up. So mistake number one, using a relay instead of a charger. This is kind of old technology. Uh, these are great, they're very reliable for the most part. Um, they typically will disconnect when you cut off the engine, but uh, I've seen ones that did not, <laughs> so it could be problematic. And um, that actually leads us to our second point, which is not ignition controlling the charger. So uh, before I get into that second point though, I've got some pictures of how you're gonna ignition control these. But uh, I do have a resource I wanna mention if you're interested in not only alternator charging, but also solar power and shore power for your van or RV. I've got a great resource for you called the Ultimate Van Power Cheat Sheet. It's got a discussion of alternator power, shore power and solar power and uh, how they all work together. They all have strengths and they also have weaknesses, but when you put them together, uh, it's gonna make sure that you have a good charge source no matter where you are. Sometimes you'll be plugged in at a campground, but sometimes you wanna go out in the desert for a couple of weeks and you're not gonna have that plug to plug into. And uh, sometimes you're gonna be driving at night, the solar's gonna be down and the alternator's gonna carry you. So uh, there's a discussion of all three charging sources and how they all work together at different times to give you a well-rounded power strategy to make sure that you have a good charge wherever you go and uh, so you're not worried about how much charge you have left in your batteries or you're not worried about running out of power. You can just enjoy your van and enjoy the scenery and uh, not worry about it. So there's the discussion of those three charging sources. There's also a discussion of different battery chemistries and the strengths and weaknesses of those. And that's gonna help you narrow down on which battery type is gonna be right for your situation. And then lastly, there is a really interesting diagram. It's gonna show uh, alternator power, solar power, and shore power, and uh, how they all link down to your end devices. So you'll be able to see essentially your entire electrical system on one page and uh, see what the links are between say your solar panel and your phone charger. What are all the connections in there? And how does your solar power come in and not mess up your alternator power or your shore power? How do they all kind of play nice together, come in, charge your batteries and get distributed throughout this system? So that's a really neat diagram that I think you'll find useful. If you want your own copy of the Ultimate Van Power Cheat Sheet, just click the link below or go to rosslukeman.com slash vanpower. So with that, let's dive into the second reason that uh, alternator charging fails, and that is not ignition controlling these chargers. Um, just like the relays, they also have kind of a engine detection where they'll detect that the voltage from the engine battery and alternator has jumped up. And that's essentially lets it know that the engine is on, the alternator is spinning, and uh, it's going to elevate the voltage of the front system when that happens. These will detect that, turn on, and charge your rear system. But um, sometimes, like I said, with the relays, they don't turn off. The voltage detection, uh, for whatever reason, doesn't work or is not reliable. And uh, essentially, I've just seen people stranded. It's going to uh, consume a small current and it could drain your engine battery. And, um, you know, Sprinter in the 2019 edition, they've added some uh, 
voltage sensing relays of their own in the front with auxiliary batteries. They're trying to get you off the engine battery uh, where we're not going to have parasitic loads. Even if you have something like a backup camera, um, aftermarket backup camera that takes four watts, if you leave that van there for a week or two, you're going to come back and you won't be able to start the engine. And so we really want to watch out. Um, and ironically, the chargers that run off the alternator and the engine battery, uh, they can be a culprit that drains the engine battery and makes you, gets you stranded. And uh, what I like to do, they've got a little green plug. Let me take it out of the bag here. Got a little green plug that goes into the bottom of the unit. And uh, essentially we can run a ignition wire all the way back to the unit and uh, plug that in there. And when this gets 12 volts, it's going to turn on and allow that power to pass through from the front system to the rear battery bank. And uh, when you turn off the engine, that line is going to go dead and so will the charger. And that is really going to ensure, let me go ahead and pull that back out, set it here. Um, that's going to ensure that these things turn off and don't end up being a parasitic load on your engine battery. So essentially the two first two mistakes that I've mentioned uh, require more money and more effort. So instead of the cheap relay, I want you to get the charger, which some of these are pretty affordable. So this, it's not extremely expensive. Uh, this is about $80. This is about $220, but this is kind of a high end one. Other brands make uh, cheaper ones. You can get maybe for $150. But uh, essentially, spend a little bit more money. This is going to regulate the voltage and the current coming from the front system, and that's going to protect uh, the front system and the rear system. And then put an extra effort into not allowing these to detect the voltage of the front system uh, where they run automatically, and we're just going to hardwire them to the ignition. So uh, here is a picture of an orange wire that ties in on a 2019 Sprinter. This is uh, going to have 12 volt positive voltage when the engine is on and it's going to have zero volts when the engine is off. Um, and then here is a short clip of me finding a ignition controlled fuse in a Chevy Express. So you can see that it lights up red when the engine is on. Now let me turn the engine off. It's nothing. Turn the engine on. So it's a little extra work, as you can see, to find a fuse or a location that turns on with the ignition and turns off when the uh, vehicle is off. But uh, if you can find that location and run that wire and plug it into these chargers, and most of these have essentially an ignition wire connection point, um, it's a little extra effort, but it's just going to be a very clean on off scenario where this thing is not going to pull power unless that engine is on. And once the engine is off, it's going to die until the next time you turn the engine on. And uh, that's again, that's going to make sure you're not stranded out there. Um, and it's kind of an amateur move with uh, people that don't do electrical systems for vehicles we end up putting parasitic loads on that engine battery and uh, we're like i don't know what happened i left it there for a week and now it's dead and it's a big mystery um, so we just want to take a little extra effort and make sure that we're not uh, putting loads on the engine battery when the vehicle's off so that's mistake number two not adding an ignition control wire to your charger and uh, the third mistake is to uh, make sure that your connections are tight um, and this is, can be applied generally to your entire power system, but with alternator charging, we do have a lot of power and a lot of current going to the rear system. So we need to make sure things are done right. So uh, mistake number three, I'm gonna talk about two different mistakes here that have to do with wires heating up uh, due to a poor connection. Um, so the screw terminals here at the bottom of the charger, they, um, I noticed last week i did a system and uh, i tightened those screw terminals and it kind of takes the strands of the welding cable this would be six gauge welding cable going in this unit um, and it spreads them out and kind of flattens them out and uh, i guess there was some adjustment but i came back 24 hours later and my connection was loose and i went ahead and re-tightened it loose connections are going to get hot and they could melt things or cause a fire and so in general you want to make sure that connections didn't loosen overnight, um, especially because we have vibration and things will shake loose out of there. And then 
oftentimes, I hate to say it, but we're assembling these electrical systems and somebody is over there talking to us and uh, we forget to tighten a bolt. And uh, you wanna make sure that you go back after you've assembled everything. You can assemble it loose. Um, you don't have to go crazy trying to tighten everything as you build it, but once you build it, go back and check systematically, check each bolt, check each connection, turn these screw terminals, make sure they're still tight, things like that. And then I wanna grab a fuse block. I'm gonna show you one other mistake. So this is a mega fuse block. It's got four gauge cable, which uh, for a lot of alternator charging systems, this would be your gauge. I wanna point out that uh, some of these fuse blocks come with little stainless steel washers in there. And um, what I've seen is people aren't sure what to do with the washers and they think maybe I, they need to put them in between the conductors. Um, you wanna make sure that your fuse and your cable, which are both copper, even if they're tin plated, so they may look silver, they may look like the same stainless steel, they're not. Tin plated copper is uh, just for corrosion resistance. Get the fuse and the cable right on each other and then you can put the stainless steel washer on top to crush that connection and make sure you have a solid connection. Do not put that stainless steel in between the conductors or it will get hot like an electric stove and uh, could melt the fuse block itself or ignite the fuse block. And I've seen this happen um, also with audio style fuses. You can get them on Amazon, they're very affordable. I would stay away from those. I would get the fuses where you have to crimp on a lug terminal on the end of the cable. Again, it's a little bit more work to do it right, a little bit more cost, but it's going to make sure you have a solid connection that's not gonna heat up. Because anytime things heat up, it, it sounds kind of benign, but they could continue to heat up to the point where they ignite and then we have big problems. So that is mistake number three loose connections or stainless steel washers in between your conductors at your fuse blocks. And uh, these particular units, they're gonna take 60 amp fuses over by the engine battery and over at the rear, between this and the rear battery. So 60 amp fuses on either end. Uh, so you may have these mega fuse blocks or uh, you may have an MIDI fuse at the uh, vehicle uh, fuse bus there at the engine battery. Different size fuses, but you wanna make sure you put fuses and uh, check the manual and make sure you've got the right fuse rating. This, as I said, 60 amp for this particular model. But um, yeah, those are three mistakes just to run back through them using a relay instead of a charger. Um, so the current is unregulated, the voltage is unregulated. That's mistake one. Mistake two, not using an ignition control wire to turn your chargers on and off so they don't become a parasitic load and strand you by draining your engine battery. And then mistake number three is to have loose connections that heat up or adding the stainless steel washers that come with these fuse blocks in between the conductors and uh, having those heat up and potentially ignite as well. So those are three ma major mistakes that I've seen with alternator charging and uh, hopefully this run through will help you avoid making those mistakes yourself. So again, if you're interested in not only alternator charging, but you wanna check out solar charging and shore power, uh, you gotta grab a, a copy of my Ultimate Van Power Cheat Sheet. Click that link below or go to rosslukman.com slash vanpower. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.